know that four of the five freedoms specifically identified in the First Amendment trace back to cases of jury nullification? One of these, freedom of the press, dates back to colonial New York before the United States was independent from England. John Peter Zenger was a publisher and printer. In November of 1733, he published the first edition of the New York Weekly Journal, a paper unabashedly opposed to then New York colonial governor, William Cosby. Cosby had previously been removed from an administrative appointment for abusing his public office for personal gain. No surprise then, Cosby turned out likewise to be a corrupt New York governor. The primary publication at the time, though privately owned, was in Cosby's pocket. It would print no criticism of his underhanded dealings in office. Cosby's adversaries, therefore, joined forces with John Peter Zinger to produce an opposition paper that would have widespread circulation throughout the colony. In November of 1734, just over a year after the birth of the New York Weekly Journal, Zenger was arrested for seditious libel. Now, while most of the material in the paper had been written by others, as its publisher, it was Zenger who was legally responsible for its content. He remained imprisoned for the better part of a year, while his wife, Anna, kept the paper going in his absence. Finally, in August of 1735, Zenger would get his day in court and argue his case to a jury of his peers. Now, it might seem to us to help establish Zenger's innocence that in fact, everything he printed in his paper was true. Not so in Zenger's time. In fact, rather than helping him, it likely made things worse for him. You see, at the time, thinking was very different than it is now. Back then, kind of the thought was, oh, it was so scandalous to criticize the government, but my word, how much more scandalous it must be if the things they were, they were accusing the government of were actually true. And the more scandalous, the more deserving of punishment. Now, the story of how Zinger actually made it to trial is fascinating, especially considering the extensive resistance of grand juries to indicting him, the fact that the judge summarily dismissed his first attor two attorneys, and so on. But in the interest of time, I'm going to skip ahead quite a bit. Ultimately, Zenger was represented in court by one of the top attorneys in the country, Andrew, Ham Andrew Hamilton not to be confused with Alexander. Andrew, however, I think you'll agree with me at the end of this, certainly deserves his own musical. Skillfully wielding the sword of rhetoric, Hamilton acknowledged up front to the jury that Zenger had in fact printed everything the government had said that he did. This was essentially an admission of guilt. A jury that was strictly enforcing the law would have convicted Zenger, but this was not the end. Hamilton debated back and forth with the judge and the prosecutor right there in the courtroom, all in earshot of the jury who were sitting right there. Not only did he point out that what was printed in the paper was true, he also pointed out that the legal doctrine that truth was not a defense to libel at that time traced back to the reviled court of the Star Chamber one of the most abusive institutions and egregious threats to individual liberty in English history. Through his banter with the bench, Hamilton was able to indirectly inform jurors of their right to judge the law as well as the facts in the case. The Chief Justice gave instructions to the jury that directly contradicted Hamilton's counsel to them that they should vote their conscience and exercise their right of conscientious acquittal by jury nullification. Nonetheless, within a half hour of beginning deliberations, the jury returned its verdict, not guilty.